Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habita fillah. From the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sifat, his uh, attributes, uh, is that he is al-ghafoor. And he is ar-rahman. You know, he possesses rahma, dhu rahma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, wa rabbak al-ghafooru dhu rahma. And your Lord is most forgiving, owner of mercy. Uh, this verse, it establishes the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, is the most merciful. That that is one of his attributes. Those are one of the attributes Allah tabarak wa ta'ala possesses, which is mercy. And one... Who possesses mercy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses mercy. The scholars of the Arabic language, they unanimously agree that the word scholar or alam can refer only to a person who has knowledge, who has ilm. And that the word hearer can only refer to a person who possesses the faculty of hearing. That the word seer or one who sees uh, can only refer to a person who possesses sight, and so on. So this, the point being a habit of Allah, and this comes from uh, some fawaid from uh, Ben Othaymin's uh, description of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The benefit here is we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses divine names and attributes. In, in that he should be worshipped by those and called upon by those divine names and attributes. And that those divine names and attributes are not separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that they have meaning. And we don't say like the Mu'attala, as we're going to see, the people who negate the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who say, they like the Jahamiyyah, they establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, yeah, he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing and the most merciful. And what they mean, not just what they mean, but what they say, they say he's the most merciful without mercy. So they establish it as a name because it's mentioned in the Quran. They can't negate that, but they don't establish the sifa. They don't establish the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, he is al-basir. So they say, yeah, he's al-basir. He's the all-seeing. But we don't ascribe sight to him. And the reason why they negate these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because they believe that by affirming them, they have made a that you've made a resemblance between Allah and his creation. This is also a part of what the, uh, the Asha'ira and the Maturidi and these other groups, these other sects, that they are also in gradations, they are affected by the same, uh, they, they have a, a type of negation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes. In that they are a little bit different because they say, instead they make ta'wil. They change the meaning or the actual alfad, the actual uh, letters, if you will, uh, of the uh, of, of of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's uh, attributes. For example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, "Ar Rahman, Allah Arsh Istawa," the Most Merciful rolls above His throne. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used the word "Istawa" about Himself. Taala. They say that, meaning the Ashiris and, and uh, I believe the Maturidiyah and some of the other uh, uh, the, the Mutakalimin, they say that this means, uh, Estoa means Estola. So here they've made uh, Tahrif or they have made uh, 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 Tahrif of the Kalima, of the word. They've actually changed the, the Levd. 
That's like uh, that. So they've changed the actual, if you will, the spelling of the word. They say estoa means estola here. This is what they do. So they do anything they can to flee away from making a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. Now, this is good. We don't make tashbih between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. But Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful who possesses mercy. But his mercy is unlike our mercy. And our mercy is unlike his mercy. He is the most merciful. His attributes are complete and perfect. Whereas we are deficient in our attributes. But we know what mercy means in the Arabic language. Likewise, istoa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it about himself. In seven places in the Quran. There's no way you can flee from it. So what they do is they change the alfaz. They change the meaning to have the meaning of a different alfaz. A different... Uh, as if you, a different word. They say istoa means istola. Whereas the ma'atala khalis, those who totally negate the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only affirm his names, they say that uh, he is, uh, you know, he is uh, Rahman bila rahma. He is the most merciful without mercy because they're afraid of saying mercy because the creation has mercy. So they don't want to say that the Creator has mercy. But again, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah says, the Creator has mercy and His mercy is perfect. And His mercy mercy is unlike our mercy. He is Al-Basir. He is a samir He's the all-hearing. He's the all-seeing. All, all but His hearing and sight is unlike ours. It's perfect. There's nothing that escapes His sight and there's nothing that escapes His hearing. Whereas our hearing is deficient. So this is this should be something which is very logical and clear that it requires no proof. Yet there are misguided people who would disassociate the names of Allah from their meanings. They say that Allah is called all hearing, but he has no sense of hearing. So this is the mu'attala. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called all seeing, al basir, but he has no sense of sight. This is how they think. Uh, how they they rationalize and this shows the danger of letting foreign ideologies taint the islamic creed the pristine creed that was uh passed down and codified with the salaf asari and this is why we tend to be very hard uh and people view ahl sunnah as being severe but ahl sunnah is severely adherent to the book in the sunnah that they don't accept those foreign interpretations and ideologies and ways of thinking in order to change the aqid of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and to uh, threaten the existence of Islam. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the religion through men or through humankind, through prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and then those who follow them and those who follow their sunnah. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the religion. Meaning being vigilant. That's why we don't celebrate the molid, for example, which is, I know everyone is, uh, you know, the hype and excited about it every year. But we have to ask ourselves, did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sanction this? Because it's actually, it actually becomes a type of ibadah. You're, you're seeking to draw near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by celebrating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday. You're seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you're, you're having dance parties where men and women, uh, you know, in all the various types of worship and bid'ah, innovation in the religion that has no authority. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't do it. After he died, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Ajma'in didn't do it. The Tabi'in, tabi'in, they didn't do it. Our Salaf Asali didn't do it. Those people later who did those things, even if some people from Ahl Sunnah mistakenly held those things, they were mistaken. Because we have no authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to celebrate these things. Because this is a this opens a dangerous door to be it's it's the Sunnah of the Christians. They began with celebrating uh what they believe was the death of Isa alayhi salatu salam. Until and 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 becoming worship, so that's why you see and you and you can ask yourself honestly. Anybody who practices the molid and goes to gatherings, 
Do you th see things which are close to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi Meaning things that are mentioned from our salaf as salih Do you see, you know, because we know the people have dhikr circles, but those are the better ones from amongst them. But often they might be have more bid'ah. They might have an innovation that could be kufriya, could even go to disbelief because they're doing and saying things and having belief, calling upon the Prophet, uh, supplicating to him, and all kind of other things. Those are some of the extremists amongst that deviant practice. Then you have uh, other groups who use it for socializing because they're just from the general Muslims and they're ignorant. So they say, yeah, let's have a party. Let's have a party and girls and boys and we'll just kick it. No alcohol. It'll be a, a purely halal social gathering. We'll dance. We'll sing. We'll have music. We'll kick it, have popcorn, do the whole nine. But is that coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that something sanctioned by Allah? Even though you believe it's a way to teach your children. This is one of the arguments. It teaches our children. It shows our children. So it shows us the importance of keeping, ad seeking Islamic knowledge and adhering to the book and the sunnah. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin al mahdiin. It's upon you my sunnah and the rightly guided khulafa rashidin al mahdiin. Adu alayha bi nawajid. Adhere to it, cling to it with your molar teeth. Wa iyakum muhtatar al mur. And beware of newly invented matters for kulu bi'atin dalala. Because every religious, innovate, uh, every uh, misguidance, uh, every bid'ah is misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the fire. That's why we don't practice it.